The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Tiger Technician Hour with your host, Basil Chapman. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. This is the uh, Tiger Technicians Hour, and it's very uh, interesting to see that the Dow has rallied 100 points after Nike's uh, uh, poor earnings outlook. Uh, but I did have a chat with Trinigate reading from Tuesday that said the high readings should see some kind of a, um, a rebound in the E-minis, and that's what we got for Thursday. And then Thursday had a very low tr a Chapman Wave trend gauge reading, uh, which suggested that even if the, the Dow futures were up pre-market, they were actually down, the Dow cash itself should go negative before it attempts a rally, which is exactly what happened. Now the new part of the day is beginning. This is uh, from about 10.20 uh, this morning till about today, because it's the day before a long week, and I'd say all the way to about 12.40. And then there's a whole new section that comes in going into the 2.50, about 10 to 3 in the afternoon Eastern time to the close. So I'll be watching this very closely. And there are a couple of things that I want to go through right now. But first, let me just do this. Dow's up 93 at 37,497. Hasn't yet taken out the high of Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Wednesday at 37,641. The S&P, same thing. The S&P is up. Uh, strongly is up 20 at 47.67. Hasn't taken out the high. I, sh I forgot it. I think I might have typed it in, then I erased it. So the high was uh, 4.77801. Let me just type that in. 4.778. What did I say? 0.1. I think I said that. Okay, 4.77. 4.47. Ay, ay, ay. One of those days I've just been charting away since early this morning before six o'clock. Four seven seven eight point oh one. Four seven seven eight. That's all I needed. All right, there we go. And um, all right, so that's a very nice rebound from that very ugly Wednesday. And today's high so far is four seven seven two point nine four. It's just I mean, why? Right, just two seconds it could do that. Hasn't done it yet. Um, I'm going to talk about this. Uh, because the weekly chart is going to close 4 o'clock today, not too much can happen, uh, famous last words, <laughs> between now and 4 o'clock with a single leg A to the upside. And I have to call it an A. And everything there says, and I did this in my webinar, and that webinar is up, it's archived. So if you're thinking of um, buying my service, the um, opening call, my daily newsletter, You'll get this that archive. It's actually an archive that I told everyone. I'm going to do it almost in two parts. I'm doing the one part on Wednesday and Saturday. And usually the weekend, I do about an hour-long video an overview where we are, what we're looking at. I talk about stocks, stocks we might not even buy, but they, because I do the analysis, some subscribers say, "Hey, that's what I'm looking for. I like it," and I'll do my own analysis, and that gives me some impetus to either buy it or not buy it, whatever it is. So um, within that context, this is very fascinating because <clears throat> we were looking at um, weekly charts to tell us, and it's because it's not 100% certain whether this is an extension of the previous buy mode, and this is just an aberrational, very strong leg to the upside, which will give back a big chunk. So far, all I can say is, the stochastic in the weekly chart of the S&P is at 90, this is a technical Friday, so I'm getting very technical here, is at 98.36% and flat. As long as it holds there, and you can see that when the stochastic goes above 80% um, like it did back in April, it can stay there all the way until it goes negative, which was right here in August. So here we are, even higher, the on-balance volume is saying, oh, man, you are so, oh, oh lady, whatever. Um, you are so overbought. You have to have a pullback. But all that happens with the um, on-balance volume is that when it pulls back, it doesn't give you a degree. For instance, here is the SMH. Look at this. Here's the SMH. And I had that really great signal from 175.86, and that was on the 
uh, December the, I think it was the 18th, no, 15th, 15th. But it coincided exactly right there, exactly with an on balance volume over bought level. So we were very fortunate. Uh, a couple of days later, we bought the SOXS three times short. And there was a huge, the same day, there was a huge turn down. And that was a clue that the others were making new highs and the estimations were stalling. And we, we took our profits. Now we're out and we're waiting to see what happens next. But you can see what happened with the unbalanced volume. It did turn down. Then it re retested and then it turned down again. And now it's back up. So that's what happens. It's it's the way you use these technical indicators. So I in my in my uh, in my webinar, I discussed them. I'm going to go through that again in a moment. So the SMHs are up 73 cents at 174.04. Very nice. Now this looks to me more like a peak uh, leg B, maybe a peak B if there's no new recovery high today in the weekly chart. And that says, let's just say that this is now a B. That means all of next week. It can go to a higher high above 175.86. This is the SMH, the semiconductor index. Very important because that, to me, is one of the benchmarks, uh, a focal point for general market trends. Now, what we're looking at is, so that will take us to leg C. Then you have to wait the full next week to see if there's a lower high to make a peak C. Then the following week, you can get to leg D. And then the following week takes you to almost the end of, uh, of January, would be a D, and that's where you've got to be careful. Wait a minute. This is leg C in the monthly chart. That means that if all of January you've got to take out whatever the high is in December by one penny, and that extends leg C, it means you can't make a peak C till the following month. Okay, that's February. That means you can't make a leg D until the following month. That's March. That means you can't make a peak D until May. <laughs> so all of this says to me, this is a very positive time. It has no, um, it has no insinuation of how deep any pullbacks could be. That is something else you have to work on. So let me just finish this up here because it's very important that I go through all the different indices. Look at the QQQ trading um, up 1.94 at 409.69. 410.97 was the high of three days ago. If it breaks that. Then there's an alternate count. That actually becomes a G slash B. <laughs> that says um, you've broken out. 408.71 was the all-time high. We're in new high territory. That's only a leg B. That means you can't get a peak D until well into the second quarter of um, 2024. So as I say, none of this tells you how deep a correction you could have. I've got other technical indicators that do that, but not the ones I'm talking about right now. You're looking at the IWM, and this is very exciting because now we've got the, the Russell 2000s, 2000 small caps. Remember, IWB is the Russell 1000 at a peak D, pulls back, hasn't taken out the higher three days ago, four days ago. It's at 262.13, up $1.23. This is already a leg D in the monthly chart. Isn't that interesting? And it's underneath the peak B, the all-time high that was made, established, I believe it was January of 2022. I think we need to talk about that. I'll be back in a moment. That was at 69. If you're looking for potential trading setups in the stock market, then Rocket Equities and Options Report is a newsletter you should try. Tommy O'Brien delivers options and equity trades when the markets present them using a combination of fundamentals and technicals. Sign up for Rocket Equities and Options Report today with a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years 
years' experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com, educating investors. The Gold Report. As a precious metal, gold is still king. It continues to hold the most effective safe haven and hedging properties across the global major trading hubs of the London OTC market, the U.S. futures market, and the Shanghai Gold Exchange. The Gold Report. Tom O'Brien publishes his weekly gold report every Monday morning for subscribers, consisting of coverage of the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, bonds, the South African Rand, as well as 25 different mining equities with specific buy-sell recommendations. The Gold Report. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. Subscribe to Tom O'Brien's Gold Report newsletter now at TFNN.com. TFNN has launched the Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no cash or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. So I need to just go through this. Remember yesterday at this time I said I, in the 10-minute in the e-mini chart, this is the uh, March e-mini futures, I said I'm going to take this ugly candle right here, the high of this candle that was made at 3 o'clock on the 20th of December on that big cascade down from the peak C1, C2, double top. And the 10-minute chart was a peak. I think it was a peak uh, D in the 5-minute uh, chart. Gave really nice signals. Well, that big cascade had a high of 49, uh, 47.98 on the candle that I, I chose. And one of the reasons is when you see sell-offs in the E-mini, what's interesting is the big sell-offs have candles that are big red and they follow one another. One, two, three. They keep going down. And then when they stall, they stall for maybe two or, two or three maximum 10-minute bars. And then if they take out that left side low, they go you know, like a dreaded H. It goes even lower. So I chose this particular level and I said this is not – exactly in the rectangle formation, which was down to the low right there. So it's a little lopsided, but that's not the point. The point is I, I have to choose. And we were at uh, time in the morning. We were right here. We were chopping around here with a little double top. And I said, I'm, I'm making this 47.98 level, the dashed midpoint. And really, it's a midpoint to the level that really was the basing level over there. So it looks almost, that's much better. Looking, it was lopsided. So look what happened. They tried to get there, tried to get there at 8 o'clock, 9 o'clock, 10 o'clock, failed, failed, pulled back to the 47, under 47.60, and then it went peak A, B, C. Where did D go? Right at 4 o'clock, triple, a double top, right there at 47, uh, yeah, 47.98. Then it pulled back. To the 200 period, look how important the 200 period. You just have to put it there. You don't have to deal with it until it gets, comes into focus. The closer it gets into focus, bing, it acts like a magnet. It grabs the price. Then the price has to force itself away either up or down from that level, and it can take a while. What it did, it made a beautiful cup formation. And then as the news came out at 8.30, there's the bar that said, oh, is that good? Is that bad? Turned out to be good, and it popped up. And it went where to? It went to the upper part of this is the double top area um, at, at 110 on Wednesday, <clears throat> which had a high of 48.30. Uh, 
and the high today so far is 48.21, trying to get there, and now it's digesting the gains. But what I said in the den before we got, got there, I said, is this 48, uh, 47.89, did I say, yeah, 47.89 level going to be a support level? It's been a repellent, but will it become a magnet and then a support level? So far, that's the support level. And going into Sunday, Sunday night, Monday in the, uh, I think internationally, most markets are closed. Usually what happens is on a holiday, like a July 4th, other countries are open and the E-mini e is trading. Sometimes a fun day, just to, if you relax and do some trading, uh, low volume. And it's, but here we are, so that 4,800 to 47.98 level, that magnet, that support level, will it become a magnet over the weekend going into Tuesday or going to push further away from it for the rest of the day? So that's the question. And we will go away from it if after 1.30, I'd say quarter to two, if the E-mini, which is up 19, it goes to about up 25 instead of pulling back and coming back down to a, like a plus eight. So that's really what you're looking for. Yeah, light, pretty much light trading today. Now let's go, oops, I did that wrong. And yeah, we go back to our story. And this is what I want you to do today. There are a bunch of things. Um, we're looking at, here we go. So we've got the IWB much stronger. All-time highs a few days ago. Um, no, not all-time highs. Under the all-time high, but in a yearly high. And not only that, the... the I call this the 266.89 to 267.30. This is a, a typical Chapman Wave 2 bar reversal. There's a Chapman Wave Roman candle right there. And we went down, down, down. It took three days because it's a monthly chart. But each one of those days made a lower low than the original low of the wick. And that was important. And then it plummeted. And that's a little bit like the S&P did back in October of 2007. So that's it. Pull back, pull back, and it goes for the um, right there, the 267 level, 267.30, and I may as well type that in since I'm going to be talking about it often. 267.13. Two, okay, that was the high. Mm -hmm. January, I believe, of 2022. Plummets down to the uh, 190s. Comes right back. Now, this is important. Remember, this is exactly the example that I said was a possibility with the S&P. It failed at a peak B, especially monthly charts. Hardly ever do you get a monthly chart that's going to fail at a peak B and not make a new high to leg C and then a D. Unless, and this is rare, underneath it you have a different count because it starts a brand new buy signal that gets upgraded to a buy mode. Look at that stochastic. It went over 80% right now. It's under. It's at 78 but if you get a peak D underneath that previous peak B, all-time high, it negates this B, that becomes your new benchmark. So this is really important right now because if by, if by one penny it breaks above 267.30, in our back of the mind, you can say, ah, oh, then now you finally got your leg C, but in reality, it's a leg D. This is your new. If it takes out that 267.13, that's your new benchmark because it's in a new buy mode, right? It's way ahead of some of the others. Look at the IWM. IWM hasn't even taken out. It's just testing the highs for the last year and a half, right? So this is the start. And that's what I was saying. That's what the whole webinar was about. Are we going to see a pullback? And in that pullback, the IWM actually holds really well. But the big caps like the Microsofts, et cetera, they come back quite sharply. <clears throat> I want to see in this pullback that's coming up whenever it is in the next couple of weeks, I want to see the financials holding as well as the iShares. If they're both going to hold up well, that just gives us a lead to say when the next big buy signal comes in for the for the first, within the first three months of 2024, this should be the participants that actually begin to lead while the big caps and the former big leaders do rally. They don't fail, but they don't rally at the same degree, the same percentage. All right. I wanted to get that out the way. I wanted to finish up gold saying gold is up sharply, up 24. Pull back a little bit from the intraday high of 2083. Still fabulous, 2075. <clears throat> it's trying to fill. 
if we can get into, see now the what was the chamber wave inverted Roman candle that we spoke about, spoke about, and was very negative. But look how the 200 period moving acted, acted as moving average, acted as support. Now this is a brand new. For now, I still have no choice but to call it a gray leg B. Yes, I know for subscribers, uh, we, we are attempting to enter a gold position today. <clears throat> one that for me is one that I've followed for years and years and years, uh, South African stocks. Um, it, If anything is going to happen in gold, those stocks, this particular, it's like a little conglomeration, little mini uh, e ETF on its own, although it's not an ETF. That should really help. That should benefit a lot. And um, and then we'll just have to go from there, even though the shorter term says the daily chance of these, some of these stocks are actually in D's and E's. I'll be back. Dow's up 92, S&P's up 20. Currencies, commodities, and bond markets are as important as ever right now with how they're driving the volatility in equity markets across the globe, which is why it's a great time to try out Teddy Kegstat's Tiger Forex Report. Teddy Kegstat breaks down the Forex markets every Monday using his 30-plus years of experience as a trading veteran of futures, Forex, stocks, and options. Teddy releases his weekly Tiger Forex Report every Monday morning with coverage of all the major currency pairs, including the dollar index, the euro dollar, pound dollar, dollar Swiss, dollar yen as well as many more and he also has weekly coverage of the crude oil market and the 30-year t-bonds as they both influence forex markets tremendously when you sign up for the tiger forex report you also gain instant access to teddy's 60-minute webinar archive he just hosted forex strategies and fundamentals what is behind the tiger forex report for all the details and to start your 30-day tiger forex report subscription today visit the front page of tfnn.com tfnn educating investors you might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. TFNN has just launched their new trading room, The Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. And now they are expanding their reach with The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no cash or added costs when you join our community of traders. In The Tiger's Den, you can look over the shoulders of Tom O'Brien and the other TFNN hosts while they analyze charts during their live Tiger TV programs and join an interactive trading community with hundreds of members exchanging ideas. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day, even at night and on the weekends. The Tigers Den at Discord is accessible on mobile or tablets as well, so it's always at your reach. To sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders, just visit the front page of TFM. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. So, uh, Technical Friday, so let's just do this. Uh, a question came in, not a more statement than a question. Using the Chapman methodology, I get a peak G where you get a peak E uh, in the daily chart. I understand that. One of the reasons is you went to this peak D right here in October. The pullback with the MACD, with the stochastic, said that, in fact, should be the starting point. And then it goes to peak A, peak B, peak C. Now, look at the distance in time, which you have a little gray A there. And then finally, you make that what I call leg B. You call that. 
the D. And if you call that a D, then it's an instant restart. So you can go plus sign, plus sign, plus sign above, plus sign below, just to point it out or make a circle. And then it goes E, F, and G. So either way, you get to the same thing that I got to, where there are two, two doji candles, and one is the silent doji candle right here the day after the high that was made in the 123 30s. And then you had the news-related cascade. So um, fortunately, this, and it happens very often, your count coincided exactly with what I had. And the only reason why I, I chose to uh, make that a peak F with a doji candle and a pullback, even though the technicals that I'm going to do, I've done a lot of work on this over the years. <clears throat> there are so many times, usually this is not two peaks, or in this case, three peaks to the upside. So that is, that's EF, but you would get it as an, a C right there. And that was the high, the doji high right there. Um, <clears throat> over the years, I've found that if I get a low, and this the and the next low after that is higher up and the technicals are strong, that says that this actually is the starting point. But what I did is I used the two hundred period moving average as your magnet line, and you can see how long it held there to say I was very comfortable saying that that's a peak F an extension because the nine period moving average didn't close negatively. And then I said, okay, now I can start a brand new buy mode, but there's nothing wrong with the count that you had and you still got to a top. So that's your alternative. That's where I put the alternative count. I decided in this particular case I wasn't going to. Could have been wrong, but I was just basing it on <clears throat> um, the 200 period moving average doji candle at a peak F, which would have been an F slash C, right? And it took too long to get to that D. Now, here's another rule of thumb since you're doing it. If you get exactly what you had here, F slash C, or even call it a C, and then it takes a long time with the cup formation, and finally you get to the D, which is where this B is, I couldn't tell you how many times. I, should, I don't like doing all these studies because I do it visually. I've got it in the back of my head, my back of, back of the head. It seems to me to work fine. Um, but it says to me that so many times, I'm not talking about once or twice, I'm just talking about so many times, way over 60%, I'm sure, it's probably more like 70. When it has that kind of a cup formation and you get to what would have been a D and then an instant restart, it's very often within three bars, it makes that new high after that peak D. When you've had a long hiatus before you get there, it's almost like it confirms for you that there's a buy mode coming up. So remember, if you get your alternate count, that would have been C, F slash C in my case, and then finally you get to the D after a, a decent pullback, but you haven't taken out the low, and you made a confirmation, all the technicals are confirming, that D so often almost immediately becomes an instant restart, and you can go high. But the trouble is if you got an instant restart there, you would have gone um, – D, then E slash A, F slash B, and a G slash C. And you would have been waiting for the D. And then it cascaded lower. I hope I'm clear about that. Just When you get one, just give me a yell and we'll talk about it on air uh, in real time. Um, so the other way to look at it is also, so where did it gap down to Nike? We're talking about Nike, Inc., B, uh, share, this is sport and sportswear. It went right to the 200 period moving average, went under it to 100 in the 107.45 area. Now it's trading at 108.69. <clears throat> and you see the weekly chart, all the technicals here are, uh, are good, but you see how close we are in the nine period moving average. And this is what you have to see when you're getting an, a nine period moving average. Let me show you, here's Nike. Here we are, that's my daily chart, the, the thick gray line is the price of whatever we're following, in this case, Nike. Look, all the technicals are still fantastic. With this incredible dive from the 120, what was it, uh, three or something? Yeah, 123.30 area. Today's low is 107, and yet it still hasn't gone pink. That's the power of this nine-period moving average, but that's also the problem. 
because and I said I was telling a, a couple of people who asked me about it, that you can't just use this one indicator because it's in, most of the time the 914 is a lagging it is by its very nature supposed to be a lagging indicator very seldom will you get the exact high at, at the turning point of the exact low it doesn't happen it, it, within a bar tree maybe it can happen but on the day no the unbalanced volume does however look at this um I would say that it's probably still going to go pink, even if there's a bounce. But this is different to, you remember the, the whole thing we spent time on, uh, talking about uh, my Chapman Wave volume climax, uh, price climax. And look at this, look at the volume here. The volume so far today, that hasn't even begun. We're just over an hour into the session. And you've already got 19 million. And you had 16 million uh, yesterday. You had... Nine, so it's going to be way over the 16 million because the day's barely begun. So what I'd be looking at is how does it respond over? Remember, Dave White used to talk about a three-day rule. I have two or three rules that apply to huge gaps on the downside. So the gap that has you're falling, 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 and then there's a gap down, and it's ugly. And then there's another gap, and then there's bad news that comes out, and everybody says, "I'm done with the stock." and they throw every share that they've had out, that's your volume climax. When it's just a single day like this, uh, anything can happen. Now the rule of thumb will be for me, it doesn't matter where it closes today, I'm just saying to you, if by Tuesday or Wednesday it can close above today's high of 110.80, I would say then it could fill some of the gap, but it's going to, the 200 period moving average is your magnet line, it's going to keep coming back there for a while. But if, in fact, it closes towards the low of the day. Then watch the low. Whatever the low is today so far, it's 107.45. If it takes it out, and on Tuesday, Wednesday, it makes lower lows, the resistance now of 109.13, uh, is that correct? Let me just double check. Of 109.22, the 200 period moving average is powerful. So I would... I'd rather wait a little bit before I'm thinking of calls or puts anything at this particular point. point. Why? Because I need the evidence. But if you're looking out a little bit, I, I would say from the speed of the decline, there's every bit of chance that the 100 and, oh, it's a little high, 112 is the 200 period moving average in the weekly. I would say that the 110 to 100, no, no, 112 is fine. The 112 area will be tested over, over the next few weeks. But I'm, right now, I'm kind of nervous and I'm watching the SMHs very closely. I think we're, we're very toppy in many ways. The Gold Report. As a precious metal, gold is still king. It continues to hold the most effective safe haven and hedging properties across the global major trading hubs of the London OTC market, the US futures market, and the Shanghai Gold Exchange. The Gold Report. Tom O'Brien publishes his weekly gold report every Monday morning for subscribers, consisting of coverage of the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, bonds, the South African Rand, as well as 25 different mining equities with specific buy-sell recommendations. The Gold Report. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. Subscribe to Tom O'Brien's Gold Report newsletter now at tfnn.com. Are you ready to take your trading to the next level? Introducing Tom O'Brien's award-winning newsletter, Market Insights, your key to successful active trading. Tom O'Brien, renowned for his expertise in the financial markets, has designed Market Insights to be your daily guide to profitable trades. Tom publishes his daily Market Insights newsletter every market day before the market open, along with updates when warranted. Stay ahead of the game with Tom's real-time analysis and trade recommendations delivered straight to your inbox. Whether you're a seasoned trader or just starting out, Market Insights provides the edge you need to navigate the markets with confidence. Ready to join the ranks of successful traders? Head over to TFNN.com and subscribe to Market Insights today. Don't miss out on this opportunity to supercharge your trading results. Market Insights comes with a 30-day money-back guarantee for all new subscribers, so you have nothing to risk. 
Don't miss out on this opportunity to revolutionize your trading game. Head over to TFNN.com right now to join the thousands of traders who have already experienced the power of Tom O'Brien's award-winning newsletter, Market Insights, firsthand. TFNN, educating investors. Biotech is booming, but for how long? Whether you think the biotech bull has room to run or has run its course, trade LABU or LABD. Direction's daily S&P Biotech three times bull and bear ETFs. Visit directioninvestments.com slash biotech today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. So let me just say, this is where I, I would say to you, in the Chen Wave methodology, this is where it's really important to use certain indicators. Look, the um, daily chart, daily, the one minute chart, I always think of this as daily, weekly, monthly, but it's one, five, and 10 minute charts of the E mini. And I always use this as kind of a benchmark of the technique in real time, just this is what we're looking at. So you can see it's been stuck in a trading band between about 48.20 and 48.14. 40, uh, so stuck in the one minute chart, but that applies to the uh, five minute chart. And look, the MACD's turned down, stochastics now under 80%, the on balance volume's turned down, the little relative strength sign there is under it. But that nine period moving average, this is the indicator, I call it the indicator of last resort, is holding so well um, that it's held holding the price. And look at the 10-minute uh, chart is even stronger, and the MACD hasn't turned negative. So that's how you can use different tools at different stages. And that's why I say I don't rely on one. I do rely on one for immediate turns, um, and that's how you use the on-balance volume, which I discussed uh, in my webinar, probably in tomorrow in my overview. I'll have to discuss it because it's going to become really important over the next few weeks uh, in January. So this, the, there is still a residual strength, and that's kind of demonstrated by a couple of stocks, and I'll just show you here, um, right here, with looking at uh, look at Apple. Apple uh, is just gone sideways. It's showing internal strength that it hasn't broken down. But and I have a big question about this B. I don't know what else I can call it. But that's what it is right now. I can't even, and I had to give it an, uh, an up arrow, but that up arrow is really crazy. In fact, I, I feel very strongly that I should take that away and put in a plus sign because um, Apple's really struggling. It's holding, but it's struggling. And one of the reasons I say that is if there is a chapway, uh, unconventional flat base restart, and everything about it says that it keeps coming to the one. 87 level it keeps no matter how high it goes it keeps pulling back it says that we could have flurries to the upside and at some point it's going to give way and this particular low right here is going to be tested right here that's the low of the 4th of december of 187.45 there it is seven points higher and it looks like what are you talking about seven points why would it suddenly drop i don't know i'm just saying but it's broken out to an all-time high they'd be in the monthly chart leg uh, be in the in the weekly chart it could be an alternate account i see no reason right now to call it anything else with 94 percent stochastic and I, I i'm not going to take the time now i will do something in my webinar in my video tomorrow i did discuss it before but i'll do so in, in, in my uh, video overview tomorrow for subscribers uh, discussing what are the what are the indicators that I'll be looking at over the next week or two to say, that's it, we've made some kind of a top. The daily charts are going to really pull back sharply. It'll impact the weekly charts some, but then the weekly charts should regain their strength and push higher. What would 
what would say that those weekly charts are starting to fail? And I'll tell you right now, make it as simple as possible. When the stochastics are over 80%, that's what you want to see. That's fantastic. That's great. That supports your bullish um, uh, bias, if that's what you've got. Not bearish, bullish. But when it starts to slip under 80%, you've got to be careful. Look what happened here with that high from uh, the August high um, at 198.23 in Apple. It pulled back pretty sharply from the uh, uh, just under 200 to the 160s. Now it's come back and the stochastic is, is as strong as it was and flat. And that's important. If it starts to go under 80% to the 78% area, watch out. That'll drag the price down. So that's something to look at. Okay, now I need to get to uh, I had a question again. Follow through on your um, Chapman Wave Roman candle, which I'd never heard of. Um, now you've introduced us to it for for about a year or so, and I've been following it. It's very interesting. So, Tom, this is what I'm looking at. Look, in UEC, this is Uranium Core, Uranium Energy Corporation. I mentioned these, and I'm going to expand this right now. It's Technical Friday, so I'm getting a little technical here. The reason why I was saying that I think uranium is on a much bigger move to the upside rather than just a short-term rally is because the strength of the monthly and weekly nine-period moving averages, MACD, stochastic, etc., is so powerful that the bias should be. And look, we've got a Chapman Wave Roman candle from last week in the weekly chart. So if we close any time in the next, uh, it has to be soon. So it has to be this week almost done. So it's not going to do it today probably. But by next week, if there's a close above 6.86 <clears throat> on any day, that's a big thing. If there's a close at the end of the week, that's really a big thing. If there is a close back uh, it doesn't have to be a close. If there's a price pullback below 617 in the weekly chart, that'll be in the, any day. It'll affect the weekly chart. That's a negative thing. But all of that's short term. Now, look at this. He has your huge Chapman Wave Roman candle the day after the high of 686. It goes to 685 on the 13th of December. Huge. And then the rule of thumb is if it can go halfway into the week for a shorter time period, I said 90 minutes below 620, I think I said now 680. I can't remember. It must have been 616 or so. Um, and holds for 90 minutes. Watch out because it retest the bottom. What it is, it just briefly went under it, opened higher, plummeted to the down. This was a news, this is earnings related. And it then went right back to the top part of the candle. Another Roman candle, but it's a green one. Same thing applies. Um, if in this case, I think I said 628. No, I said 620. Six. So 626. Look, it hasn't done that. But then it did that a few days ago. But look what happened. I've got a two day rule for this. So it wasn't a two day rule. Now it has something else and says now it could go sideways in a rectangle formation. If it takes and closes above that 686 level on a daily basis, that is just showing tremendous strength. Uh, yes, sorry, I should have mentioned we are long. Uh, we are along from right over there, the 346 uh, area, I believe, um, right there. So, and we've taken a little bit off. Now, the big thing is, why didn't I add to the position which I want to do over here? Because it was so close to, to if it took out this low, then I'm back where I'm started, even though it's past the two day rule. So I just I needed now that yesterday's candle was great. Today was the day I should have said, hey, this is acting so well. Um, let's add a little bit. We could take the tads off. And tomorrow in my webinar, I'll talk about tads. I always say take a tad off. It means if you've got 100 of whatever it is, a tad is like eight or 10. Because at some point, we'll take two or three. So now you've still got 70% of the trade. You want a core position. And then we deal with that. And then I like to add back. Could I look at crisp? So this is CRISPR. It's in the whole biotech area, CRSP. I was, don't forget, I want to look at COIN. So COIN is on my list for today. Um, yes. So uh, CRISP, yeah. So this is, oh, of course, I had it all notated, but I lost my notation. This is because of the way when it shuts down without, suddenly, without actual special save. 
Dustin would have managed to say. Yeah, I just think it's stuck. It's trading at 63.40. I'd just say it's probably trapped between 60, trapped between 67 and 58-ish. If it breaks 8, 58 on the downside of the Tesla 200 period moving average, right now, I don't see TFNN anything. has just launched their new trading room, the Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. And now they are expanding their reach with the Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. In the Tiger's Den, you can look over the shoulders of Tom O'Brien and the other TFNN hosts hosts while they analyze charts during their live Tiger TV programs and join an interactive trading community with hundreds of members exchanging ideas. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day, even at night and on the weekends. The Tiger's Den at Discord is accessible on mobile or tablets as well, so it's always at your reach. To sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders, just visit the front page of TFNN.com. The reality is that navigating financial markets can be risky. Markets can be chaotic and difficult to understand. Having the latest market advice can help you turn this chaos into a key for creating winning trades. At TFNN, we understand that it can be hard to find reliable market news. That's why each of our market experts offers their very own market newsletter, a must-have tool for every trader out there striving to find an edge in today's markets. TFNN newsletters cover every aspect of the markets so you can analyze the market before you trade. Try any of our great newsletters risk-free with our 30-day money-back guarantee. Just visit the Newsletters tab on the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com, educating investors. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern for free. Each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. Hello, so we're looking at CRISPR, but CRISPR, I would say uh, CRISPR Therapeutics, CRSP, trading up 256 and 6316. It's just kind of stuck in a range. I, by the way I'm looking at it, I think it needs a couple of weeks and I wouldn't be surprised later in January if it holds the 50 support under any negative scenario 
it actually starts to get to 71.30, 70, 72.50, that area. I think it's going to do very well going into end of January, beginning of February. But at this particular point, I just think it's in a holding pattern. Now, I just need to do this before we wrap up. I want to wish everyone absolutely a Merry, a Merry Christmas, just a wonderful long weekend. If you're with family, just enjoy your family, have a good time. The dollar has come back and has come back to the extent that this dashed trend line is once again about to be uh, tested. So um, that's allowing gold to move up. Not much else the way I'm looking at it is, is, is positive for gold, but this is really good that, for gold because the dollar's pulling back. Meantime, we'll do more of this next week. Have a wonderful weekend. Stay tuned for Steve Rose. Merry Christmas and check out my opening call plus my video and my website.